Right now, I am very happy to first introduce and then bring on Dr. Zachary McVicker from the Paley Institute. Dr. McVicker is a fellowship-trained sports medicine physician specializing in minimally invasive arthroscopic surgery of the hip, knee, shoulder, and elbow. Dr. McVicker completed a sports medicine fellowship at the world-renowned Cedars-Sinai Curlin Job Institute in Los Angeles, where he participated in the treatment of several professional athletes. During his time in L.A., Dr. McVicker served as the assistant team physician for the Los Angeles Rams, Dodgers, Galaxy, L.A. Football Club, Los Angeles Sparks, Anaheim Ducks, and the Los Angeles Angels, as well as the USC football team. Since making the move to Florida, Dr. McVicker has served as the assistant team physician for the Miami Marlins, as well as the Jupiter Hammerheads, and the head team physician for the Jupiter Christian High School Eagles. So, Dr. McVicker, I'm going to start things with basketball, and according to the Golden State Warriors, Hall of Fame-bound point guard Steph Curry reportedly suffered partial tears to his superior tibiofibular ligaments and interosseous membrane, as well as a lower leg contusion. So, doctor, can you just break down these types of injuries and the treatment options available? For sure. This is an interesting injury because uh, it usually gets more attention as like a, a high ankle sprain. It happens lower in the leg. Uh, but this happened a little higher in his leg. So the two bones that connect the lower leg, the tibia and the fibula, are connected by several different ligaments in separate spots. So there's really strong ones at the ankle and then again at the knee where they connect. And so the, the point of these ligaments is to keep these moving as a unit. And so you can injure these ligaments with a rotational force, like spraining the ankle in certain rotations, whereas a laterally directed or, or uh, separating of the two bones, that kind of force, sometimes how you plant your leg and plant your ankle can direct some force through that, that ligaments in the ankle up through the inner osseous membrane and then up towards the, the knee where he has the, the sprain. So, you know, these can be um, acute or chronic um, depending on how the force is and then, you know, can affect anywhere from the ankle all the way up to the just below the knee. Doctor, what's the recovery time like for these types of injuries and how quickly would an athlete be able to bounce back on the court or on the field? So these are just like any other kind of sprain of a ligament. Um, you know, they can take, depending on the grade of the sprain, can take anywhere from a couple weeks to a few months, um, you know, so long as they're not surgical, uh, which is, appears that it is not. Uh, so, you know, it just depends on how bad uh, the force was on the ligaments and, and how much injury they actually sustain, but uh, can usually generally around six weeks uh, is, is a good ballpark. Again, here with Dr. Zachary McVicker from the Paley Institute. Doctor, you've worked with numerous pro athletes. What are the most common hip and knee shoulder injuries you've seen? And, you know, arthroscopically, how do you treat these types of ailments? Yeah, so for the athlete, we'll just go, uh, you know, top down. So the shoulders, uh, we're talking more about the shoulder labrum uh, and, you know, some rotator cuff injuries. But generally speaking, it's more of the labrum in the shoulder uh, and this, this affects many overhead athletes uh, and uh, anybody bringing any weight over their head, anything like that, uh, and any kind of, uh, you know, throwing motion or, you know, volleyball spiking or serving, anything like that. And then, you know, working down to the hip, uh, the most common one is something called femoral acetabular impingement or FAI, hip impingement, um, and labral tears. Uh, so this can affect anybody who's running, uh, squatting deep, and it creates a, a lot of pain in the groin, which then... It, uh, it can limit some of the motion of the hip and then cause injuries to other places because you're compensating. So that's, a, that's an important one. Um, and then, you know, going down to the knee, we're talking about ACLs, uh, any kind of ligament injuries, meniscus tears, things like that. Doctor, I also read that you have extensive training in muscle sparing, anterior total hip replacements. Can you explain this option that you provide for the latest in hip care? My practice, uh, I do a lot of hip preservation with the hip arthroscopy, uh, treating the impingement that we talked about, uh, and a lot of uh, dysplastic hips. Uh, so the anterior approach allows me to get people back to what they want to do a little quicker. So my patient population, you know, if they're just too far gone for any kind of hip preservation surgery, generally my patients are a little younger who need a hip replacement. They're just too far gone. And so they're a younger, more active population. So you know, I choose to do this, this approach because it gets them back very quick to what they want to do. There's no restrictions. 
And that's really why I like it. There's no, there's very, very little risk for dislocation or instability of the hip. Uh, and the positions that are unstable are not natural to get into. So they can get back to running marathons, hiking, doing what, really whatever they want after they're all uh, healed from the surgery. Really amazing stuff to hear about as we chat with Dr. Zachary McVicker, a sports medicine physician and arthroscopic surgeon at the Paley Institute. So, doctor, another injury we hear about all the time is the hamstring injury, and, and not just in the professional ranks, but you know, for the casual athlete and the weekend warrior. How do you go about treating hamstring injuries, especially when there are multiple grades and severity of injury? It just depends on the location of the injury. So the muscle belly is the most common, uh, so mid-thigh, and, uh, and usually this is just treated with some rest and uh, you know, some PT and and just gradually getting back to your, your activity and can heal depending on the grade, you know, anywhere from a couple weeks to a couple months. Uh, the ones that are more surgical that I treat are these, they're called proximal hamstring injuries. So it tears off of where it connects near your buttock. Uh, and these can happen from it. You think about uh, like wakeboarders who get, you know, their hips force are, are forced to flexion and then their legs are still extended and they kind of pop it off where it attaches to your pelvis. And so when that happens, um, you know, you lose the force uh, and, and stamina. And so you really start to feel uh, the, the weakness in the hamstring. It can cause some nerve injury, too. So we tend to repair those. Uh, we can do that uh, minimally invasive as well. We do it through what's called endoscopic. Uh, and uh, so we do it through a camera and some small incisions and reattach it to the bone. Um, you know, if there are certain types, then we open. But generally, we like to do it through a scope. Doctor, why is it so vital to see a sports medicine physician like yourself versus trying to treat the injury alone or rely on online sources? So there's a lot more that goes into treating an injury, especially in an athlete, than, um, than just doing a good job on the surgery. And there's a lot, a lot of factors that go into how well they're going to succeed. You want to know about rehab after. That's a big one. You need some good therapists to help you and is, work well with the surgeon. Uh, and then ultimately, you know, where they're at um, uh, mentally when they're ready to get back. I mean, that's a that's a huge limiting factor for some players getting back, you know, to trust that they're not going to get hurt. You know, that trust their leg, trust their arm, whatever it is uh, to get back to playing at the highest level they possibly can. And you need someone along the way that can assist with that. And if you're struggling, knows how to treat it and uh, get you over that hump. Staying on the topic of mental health and making sure you're in a good place mentally while recovering from an injury. Can you just talk more and elaborate again on the importance of optimal mental well-being during rehabilitation and recovery? Yeah, sometimes you need, uh, some athletes need some, some uh, sports psychology uh, to trust things again. Uh, and, and anxiety and depression is getting a lot more uh, media attention through you know, some athletes who are brave enough to come out and speak about it. And that's a huge thing that, that affects not only athletes, but any patient undergoing a surgical procedure. Anxiety and depression can really lower your outcomes uh, after surgery. So getting in a good headspace is really important for the best outcome possible. Uh, and then, you know, nutrition and things like that, that are, are key to, to healing and, and making sure that everything is, is going the way that it should. Wrapping things up with Dr. Zachary McVicker from the Paley Institute. Doctor, in the arena of minimally invasive arthroscopic surgery of the hip, the knee, the shoulder, and the elbow, what's new in terms of technologies or techniques that could improve or enhance care in this type of medicine? I think a lot of the, the new innovations are biologics, meaning um, things like platelet-rich plasma, um, you know, in the future, stem cells, things like that, that, that are constantly having research and ways to the, that we can heal our own body through some assistance with, uh, with, with doctors as well. And, you know, the, the surgical procedures are always being changed with new technology, new techniques, and we're constantly doing research on that. So it's, it's, it's always changing, especially the arthroscopy cases. Um, what we can actually, you know, stick a scope into and, and heal is, is, uh, is ever-changing and, and expanding. Dr. McVicker, I got to let you go, but I sincerely appreciate the time. Thank you for all the awesome information, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. All right. Thank you. Again, that was Dr. Zachary McVicker, MD, sports medicine from the Paley Orthopedic and Spine Institute. You can find Dr. McVicker 
on the main campus of the Paley Institute in West Palm Beach, which is on the St. Mary's campus. And Dr. McVicker also has clinics in Palm Beach Gardens, and there will soon be a location in Jupiter as well. To learn more about the Paley Institute, go to paleyinstitute.org. That is Paley, P-A-L-E-Y, or call 561-844-5255.